Setting up your AED Plus Trainer 2 is easy. Here are the items that are shipped with your Trainer 2. CPRD training pads, documentation, the Trainer 2 with remote controller, and batteries. Remove the remote controller from the slot under the handle of the Trainer 2. Locate the four D-cell and two AA batteries that shipped with your Trainer 2. Slide the battery compartment door off of the remote controller and install the two AA batteries. Be sure the negative end of each battery contacts the large spring in each battery slot. Then replace the battery compartment door. To make certain the remote controller has power, push the big center button above the line on the remote controller, called the View Enter button, once. Two green lights should come on and stay on for about eight seconds and then turn off. Now remove the battery compartment door of the Trainer 2 and install the four D-cell batteries as indicated on the bottom of the battery compartment. Again, be sure the negative end of each pair of batteries contacts the large spring in each battery slot. Replace the battery compartment door. To make certain the Trainer 2 has power, push the on-off button once. The red status indicator light should flash once, and then the green status indicator light should remain on. Now turn the unit off by pushing and holding down the on-off button once. These batteries will supply enough power to support about 100 hours of training. If the Trainer 2 ever prompts you to change batteries, you should install new batteries sometime within the next hour of training. Continue your Trainer 2 setup by removing the CPRD training pads that came with it. Open the box and remove the pads and training gels. Open the package and remove the pads. Attach the training gels to the CPRD training pads. Remove the lid from the Trainer 2, place the pads on the face of the unit, and plug the pads into the Trainer 2, and replace the lid. This completes the setup of your AED Plus Trainer 2. There are a few basic things you should be familiar with when using your AED Plus Trainer 2. The remote controller, like a television remote controller, is always on and ready for use. You don't have to turn it on or off. Unlike a television, however, you cannot use the remote controller to turn on the Trainer 2. It must be turned on first by pushing the on-off button once. All lights will illuminate sequentially, and the green status indicator light will remain on. Unlike the clinical AED+, the AED Plus Trainer 2 has no status window for a green check or red X. Instead, it has two status indicator lights. When the Trainer 2 unit is on and ready to communicate, the green light will stay on. When both status lights are off, the Trainer 2 unit has no power and communication with the remote controller is not possible. The Trainer 2 unit will automatically turn itself off after 15 minutes of no activity. Whenever you put the Trainer 2 into pause mode with the remote controller, the green light will flash continually. The other status indicator light is red. It reacts to all transmissions it detects from the remote controller. When it receives a command that is valid, it flashes once for about a second, and the Trainer 2 unit will do what the command has called for. 
If it receives a command that is not valid, it will flash three times quickly and the trainer 2 will not accept the command. If you attempt to transmit a command to the trainer 2, but the red light does not respond, the controller is either too far away or not pointed directly at the unit. The remote controller may not transmit beyond 30 feet. It also transmits into an area that is only 15 degrees to the left and right of the straight line direction in which it is pointed. A single remote controller can be used to control multiple Trainer 2 units, but they must be 15 degrees apart to maintain separate control. Note that the face of the Trainer 2 unit has a printed facsimile of the display screen found on a clinical AED+. This screen is the most important one a user of the AED+, is likely to see. It shows the shock count, the time elapsed since the unit was turned on, the text that matches the voice prompt to push harder, and the bar gauge that moves up and down with each compression and shows the compression depth recommended by the American Heart Association. Users who want to practice real CPR help feedback for rate and depth of compressions using a clinical AED Plus should use the travel trainer in addition to the trainer too. Notice the horizontal line on the remote controller. The buttons above this line are used to select and define the rescue scenario to be run. The buttons below this line are used to control the scenario once it begins to run. Always begin setting up a rescue scenario by pushing once on the big button in the center. Once you've selected and defined your scenario, push it a second time to transmit the scenario to the trainer too. This button is called the View Enter button because the first time you push it, you can view the current scenario defined at the remote controller. The second time you push it, the remote controller transmits or enters your scenario settings to the Trainer 2. You can be sure the scenario has been transmitted to the Trainer 2 if it responds by flashing the red indicator light once. When you turn the remote controller on, the green lights will show you the current scenario setting for 8 seconds. While these lights are on, you can change scenario settings at the remote controller prior to transmission. Choose your scenario with the Scenario Selection button. Every time you push it, the green lights will indicate a change to a new scenario. Scenarios 2 through 5 are fixed. The paired icons next to each light indicate what the first and second heart analysis in each scenario will be. Scenario 2 will call for a shock on both the first and second analysis. Scenario 3 will call for no shock on the first analysis and then a shock on the second. Scenario 4 will call for a shock on the first analysis and then no shock on the second. Scenario 5 will call for no shock on both the first and the second analysis. The first scenario is not fixed but manual, which means you can call for a shock or no shock as you proceed through the rescue. The CPR metronome button to the right of the View Enter button determines whether CPR metronome beeping and prompting will be on if the light is lit or off if the light is not lit. The CPR metronome should be turned on whenever you are training with CPR D-pads. Turn it off whenever you are training with STAT pads. This will cause the trainer 2 during the CPR interval to act like the clinical AED Plus with stat pads attached and say every 15 seconds continue CPR instead of beeping and prompting push harder and good compressions. Now suppose you want to run a scenario that presents a successful rescue using CPR D pads in which the first heart analysis advises a shock flashing shock button and the second one calls for no shock because the victim has been resuscitated. 
Push the View Enter button once to put your remote controller in setup mode. Select Scenario 4 with the Scenario Selection button. Push the CPR Metronome button once to turn on the CPR Metronome used by the CPRD pads. The scenario is now set up, but in the remote controller only. Point the remote controller at the Trainer 2 and push the View Enter button a second time to transmit the scenario to it. The red status indicator light will flash once to indicate that the new scenario has been communicated to and accepted by the Trainer 2. This completes the scenario setup. Your Trainer 2 will continue following this scenario until you transmit another one to it using a remote controller. Even if you turn the unit off and change batteries, when you turn it back on, it will follow this same scenario. To run a scenario, begin by pushing the on-off button to power up the Trainer 2. The student starts the scenario by pushing the on-off button a second time. Once the scenario is running, the instructor can control the progress of the scenario by using the six buttons below the horizontal line on the remote controller. The bottom left button can be used to pause a scenario once it is running. Check responsiveness. Call for Push the pause button once to pause the scenario. Push it again and the scenario will resume. The bottom right button can be used to stop a scenario that is running or paused. Push the stop button once to stop the scenario. Unlike pausing, stopping resets the scenario to the very beginning. If the student now pushes the Trainer 2's on-off button, the scenario will restart from the very beginning. The two middle buttons can only be used during the CPR interval while the Trainer 2 unit is beeping in a scenario with the CPR metronome on. Push the left button once to make the Trainer 2 say, Push harder. Push the right button once to make the Trainer 2 say, Good compression. Both middle buttons can be used at any time during the CPR interval. Push harder. But at other times, Stop CPR. Don't touch patient. These Analyze. buttons are invalid and their transmissions will be rejected by the Trainer 2 unit. Don't and the red patient. light will flash three times quickly. The No Shock button on the top right is used to call for a result of no shock advised on the next heart analysis. It can only be used during a manual scenario and not during one of the four fixed scenarios. By default, in every manual scenario, the heart analysis Don't touch patient. Analyze it. will always advise a shock. Push the No Shock button once to force the next heart analysis to advise no shock. No shock advised. Start CPR. This button is unidirectional. Once you have called for no shock, you cannot override it to make the Trainer 2 unit call for a shock. Once a heart analysis is over, however, the Trainer 2 unit will automatically reset the next heart analysis to advise a shock. The top left button, the pads button, is used to let the Trainer 2 unit simulate when pads have been attached and are in contact with the patient's heart. In all scenarios, when the Trainer 2 unit says, Attach defib pads to patient's third chest, it will keep repeating this prompt. Don't touch patient. Analyze it. Until the pads button is pushed once to simulate pads attachment Don't touch patient. and heart rhythm detection. The pads button can also be used to indicate that a student has attached pads quickly which will cause a jump to analysis. Stay calm. Check responsiveness. Call for help. But don't touch patient. Analyzing. Don't touch patient. Analyzing. 
During a hard analysis, you can push the pads button once to simulate a broken connection to the patient's heart. Analysis halted. Check electrode. Push the pads button a second time to simulate reconnection of the pads and detection of a heart rhythm. Don't touch patient. Analyze it. Now let's review a complete simulated rescue using the AD Plus Trainer 2. The instructor sets up a manual scenario using CPR D pads and transmits the scenario to the trainer too. The student begins the scenario. Unit okay. Stay calm. Check responsive. You okay? You call okay? for help. You call for help. Attach these pads to patient's bare chest. The instructor pauses the rescue to discuss the student's actions so far and then resumes the scenario. Attach defib pads to patient's bare chest. Don't touch patient. Analyze it. Don't touch patient. Analyze it. Shock advised. Don't touch patient. Press flashing shock button. Shock delivered. Start CPR. The instructor determines that the student is not pushing deeply enough. Push harder. The instructor determines now that compressions are deep enough Good compressions. and that the scenario is complete and the class should move on to another scenario. This completes your AED Plus Trainer 2 training video. If you have further questions, consult the operator's guide that came with your AED Plus Trainer 2 or call Zoll Technical Service.